Yesterday, to my surprise, Carlton made a strong case for their best performance this season under Michael Voss, fending off a long list of injuries and a formidable Fremantle side to pick up what was ultimately a comfortable win over the top four side. The standout contributor on his way to a likely three Brownlow votes was Carlton youngster and my hero, Sam Walsh, who racked up a career-high 40 disposals, 7 clearances and 543 metres gained. Deeper than that stat line is the classy second quarter performance which propelled Carlton from facing a 9 point deficit at quarter time to a 15 point lead at the half. A quarter which saw the following figures, 16 touches, 2 marks, 12 handballs, 3 clearances, 4 inside 50s and 94% disposal efficiency from only 4 centre bounce attendances. Some of these stats hold no meaning. But now, let's take a deep dive to dissect his game from this quarter. It's no secret Sam Walsh works exceptionally harder than his peers, but this quarter showed not only his gut-running ability to get from contest to contest, but his ability to handle the football cleanly and make the life for his teammates much, much easier. Disposal 1, an exceptional one-handed pickup without hesitation or mess, and a sweeping pass to Cottrell out wide. This allows time with footy in hand, and time to set up a pass down the line. The result? Forward 50 entry and near goal. Disposal 2. Shrugs off the opposition enough to free his hands. It looks like his vision is blocked, but the awareness despite having a free kick paid and pressure on his tail to get a pass out to Fisher gives him a world of time for another forward 50 entry and stoppage. Disposal 3. Stays upright for an extended period after planting his legs wide enough upon landing. This allows a pass to the back of the stoppage as he turns away, which allows for continued pressure on the Dockers back six as a result of the build-up. About 10 seconds later, he's back for disposal four, this time tapping the ball forward as a block is laid by Nunes. Walsh sends it to a damaging spot again. Disposal five, the link-up handball. Whilst Mundy is applying an element of pressure, Walsh chooses the correct option and we can reset with time on our hands. Disposal 6. The intercept after forward half pressure is rewarded. Smartly rewards the man running past and this leads to another forward 50 entry. Disposal 7. Quick hands in close. People don't understand the importance of this. Amazingly enough, the end product is a Cottrell mark and goal. Sam Walsh, the anchor of this creation. Disposal 8. The burst from the pack. Once again, clean below the knees, has the composure to buy himself space, survey his options, and this leads to an exceptional delivery of the footy. Great ground awareness. We mentioned Walsh's ability to identify where he should situate himself. Again, front and centre for disposal number 9, the hand pass to the running Kemp, and could consider himself stiff for not being used again, but it all works out and we have a back half exit. Disposal 10, same shit, different time. Beautifully roved, as rovers should do. Kick to a contest, not an advantageous kick, but still territory is gained. Disposal 11. Practically being tackled as he gathers. On the up, Vision sees Doherty, he passes to Doherty. And as the play runs through, the short pass is executed. Just like that, tight congestion and invited pressure evaporates because of that simple Walsh feed. Disposal 12, Walshy after being involved in the previous play, presents for the pass. We're blessed to have a hard worker like him. However, he's been on for upwards of 15 minutes in desperate need of a breather. A very tired kick here, but our arse is saved by Louis Young. Great composure here to give us control once again. Fresh off a breather, we see the full effect. He started the quarter playing predominantly from half forward for that longer interval on the ground, to close the half, he's got a quick five minute stint in him on the ball, and we see him running his guts out as a result. Disposal 13. He absolutely swoops on a footy to be one, leaves Sarong in the dust, Nunes with a good fake and sidestep, and Charlie eventually snaps. How damaging was that? Next centre bounce, this touch doesn't count, but his sprint off the stoppage here and good identification of a free kick in Carlton's favour is something I wanted to take notice of. I'm sold he ran so fast he tripped over his own feet here. Give Clark credit here, I thought Walshy was off to the races. Disposal 14, a release hand past the Crips, which would have resulted in another forward line rush, had Cripper established possession of the ball. Ball gets sent the other way. Disposals 15 and 16, 
While she gut runs to this contest with 3 seconds left, gathers at full pelt, 1-2 with Saad, then 1-2 with Kennedy, and best believe if the siren didn't go, he's getting a 1-2 with Boyd. This man does not stop running. It's unbelievable. That 20 minute breather is well deserved. Credit to Carlton's rotations for letting him play this way. I'm sold it's the perfect strategy for him whilst our team is composed this way with all the injuries. To summarize, we're seeing Walsh do absolutely everything. Kickstarting the play with contested footy, working his ass off, bursting away with the footy, setting his teammates up. This all helped flip the script, and I'll have you know these are non-negotiables of his game. He doesn't leave anything out there on the footy field, and that's not exaggerated. When everyone looks like they'll drop dead from fatigue, he's still leaving them in the dust, a class above. Another thing that had Freeman on an absolute shambles is the ferocity of our play, and the fans really fed off of this as well. We see Jack Silvani just track the footy as Freeman will try to head towards safety in the boundary line. First he's on Young's tail, then he's on the tail of Hughes, and finally he rams Fife to the turf. You've got a contest on centre wing. Nunes buries Schiltz to the ground. He eliminates any ability for Schiltz to run off and use his creativity to evade. Here, we see what looks quite innocent at first. Fremantle exiting trouble and advancing the ball forward. Though it never happens, Honey is persistent, applies a great never-ending chase. The fact the ball hits Collier on the bounce means that he is in a similar pressurised situation to that of Clark when he released the ball. It just transmitted over. He's indecisive, he can't even hold the ball correctly, and he turns it over. Even this hit by Durden, Schultz thinks he's going to get nice, a nice and easy handball over the top. Yeah, no. Albo thrust up right to the ribs. Here's another one. Freeman all looked to have numbers at the back of the stoppage, and you'd think, yeah, she'll be right. Well, I have news for you. Ryan goes back, Walker's overwhelmed, he passes the Cox, he's under tremendous pressure, somehow stays upright, Brody loops the hand pass over, and even as Logue kicks, he's dragged down. They didn't get the back 50 exit by any means, they had to earn it. Now, given this forward 50 pressure and the repeat entries, the only thing Dockers players are looking for is something that gives them command, something that keeps them as far away from those pressures as possible. So short kicks and possession footy is the answer. Or is it? Ryan's kick gets pinged for not 15. Bit of touch and feel as he kicks. The kick to Young doesn't even make the distance and players converge. Dump kick. Like I knew we were scary, but this scary? Here it is again. Pierce gets pinged for not 15. Immediate pressure, so Wage hands that away to Pierce, who is under immediate pressure. Honey closes down the distance between him and Pierce with speed. Great chase down. Brody is pressure. Frederick is pressure. Pierce hesitates and invites pressure, so he kicks with pressure. Misses a target, our pressure was off the charts. It's a lot of pressure. And for the third time, huge grunt, big tackle over the boundary line. And last of all, even in the final three minutes, Harry's following his own ruck work and winning a free and kicking a deserved goal. We look at stats to evaluate this character. In a game where we had 48 more touches and 24 more inside 50s, we had 17 tackles inside the forward 50 and 9 more tackles overall. Just under halfway in the second quarter, we had 14 tackles to 1 inside forward 50 for the game. And for the second quarter, when there were 7.30 remaining with stoppages, we had 13 tackles to 2 in the quarter. This sums it up for me. Right until the final siren, right until the whistle is blown to signal the ball over the line, we are unrelenting, we don't settle for less. We've raised the threshold. Older Carlton isn't even sticking a tackle. This Carlton are nailing tackles right into the boundary fence. It's unbelievable. And this is what Carlton fans can rightfully get passionate about. Continue this, and good luck to the rest of the league. Some players can't be replaced, but some things stay afloat and this ferocity channels right through the whole team. We flagged Voss's ferocity being infectious through these players at the start of the year. Seems like it's happened. A new Carlton is here. A serious Carlton. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.